Hey, welcome back, everybody. And let's have a little bit of fun today. All right. So interest rates, well, they've been bobbling and they go up and down all the time, but they've also been inching up just a hint upward recently. Uh, we do expect them to come back down just a little bit. We did get some positive feedback, you know, as far as from the feds and what they're going to do uh, with that buyer activity, pended activity, well, it's still on an upward trend. In fact, we're running into a few issues when we take a look at the, um, the available inventory, the number of homes available each and every day. In fact, we had uh, on our running seven-day average, we had 714 homes coming on market which is fabulous. Uh, and in fact, our spring market is really kind of hitting us, uh, you know, earlier than February, which is great because normally January is pretty quiet. However, we also took off almost 1,100 homes. So our inventory, we are depleting it again. And we'll go through some of those metrics as we take a look at the Puget Sound area, the Seattle area, Bellevue area, South King County, Pierce County, Snohomish County, and then outlying areas and whatnot. We will cover those also uh, on different videos and different reports. So with that, as we take a look at our uh, little, I guess, our news reports for the day, if uh, we blow this up, uh, contracts are up, uh, which suggests an uptick in spring home sales. We already talked about that. We're already seeing that. Mortgage rates improved today, but remain near a six-week uh, six high. And... That is a lot of which uh, is from some of the reporting because remember, mortgage rates are based on, you know, they're, they're publicly traded. They're not based on what the feds do. The feds can have an impact, but the feds don't control mortgage rates. They affect what lenders lend, you know, uh, to themselves daily, cars, credit cards, uh, in your HELOCs, home equity line of credits. Those are the things that the feds control because those are considered short-term um, interest rates. Anyway, moving on. Uh, when we take a look at our chart here, the, uh, the key thing to understand is we look at residential only. And when we take a look at this metric here, we'll pop up full screen in a second. Uh, you know, condos are a different little beast in and of itself. Multifamily, manufactured homes, rentals, uh, vacant land. They're all, they're kind of unique into themselves. Because of the bulk of the people look at residential, we're only considering residential in our metrics. Just to be clear, we had that question that was posed. Uh, for clarity, it is residential only. All right, so let's take a uh, let's blow this bad boy up. Look at that. So our inventory is basically down 15%. All right, but the pended is already up just a skosh, just 1.2%. It's just a few homes. Uh, and then, of course, our sales are only off of, you know, three quarters of 1%. And that's a big deal because last year, you know, we had a massive disparity, you know, like, oh, you know, we were, you know, 40,000, 30,000 homes off from where we should have been, you know, in a still a limited inventory market, but still, you know, that number of sales and that hit the media and everything else. Uh, the, the complement to that was that we also didn't have a lot of inventory. So the two went, you know, hand in hand. So when we take a look at inventory, our inventory and our demand are right on par. In fact, we're, we have a little less inventory and a little bit more demand, not a ton. Okay. It's not like we're just <laughs> breaking, you know, uh, records on, you know, as far as number of sales. So we're just, we're super close. So we're, 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 we're not in balance. It's still a seller's market by a little bit, but not a ton. And that I wanted to give a point of clarification to on a different question that was asked because, well, I had some really good questions that were asked. So just for clarity, it's not a buyer's market. It's leaning more towards a seller's market, but not by much. Okay. So just to keep that one in perspective. All right. Let's uh, let's get back to our uh, to our little chart here. All right. So when we take a look at new construction, now new construction is even doing better, even as it did last year. And as you can see, we're down 16% uh, as far as overall in you know inventory available. Even new on market is down uh, three and a half percent. But 
When you take a look at it again, we're almost 15% higher in sales and just, just a tad bit off of where we were at as far as actual closings. Now, understand, the pendant and closings, especially with new construction, that can be a 30, 60, 90-day lag. The fact that we're up so much higher as far as pendant homes, just like last year, just shows that we are still with new construction we are still seeing some really good velocity. Yes, there are still incentives being offered and they're not adjusting the, the pricing at the plat necessary because they need to maintain uh, price stability, but you are seeing some other alternatives. The biggest one being interest rates, which we're gonna hit that one in a little bit as far as different ways of enticing buyers away from existing construction that is already, well, pretty low. Uh, we are less than half of where we were pre-pandemic levels as far as inventory. We uh, we have basically about 6,000, just shy of 7,000 homes, and we should be the 12,000, 13,000 homes on market. And so we're just struggling with inventory, and a lot of the buyers that are out there are seeing that. Well-priced homes are still going off within seven to 10 days. Uh, homes that are overpriced, well, they're staying on the market 20, 30, 40, sometimes longer, which means that you're taking, as a seller, you're taking dollars out of your pocket. Just saying. Uh, buyers are most interested at well-priced homes and are being very, very pragmatic about their process and how they're looking at them. So don't overprice your home. Because remember, price is the first impression that a buyer sees. All right, let's move on. Sermon is over. REOs. Okay, this is hilarious. Now, when you initially look at these numbers and you say, oh my gosh, pendant sales are up 100% and solds are up 185%. Well, okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> we have such a limited inventory. I mean, we really, it's negligible. In fact, it said, uh, you know, hey, George, there's 57 homes. And I thought, oh, is that true? Is that how many of these people are going to be on the wall of shame? And on the wall of shame, yes, we have 10 people on the wall of shame, meaning that they were published as a bank owned property, but they're not bank owned. They actually, these listing agents are representing their buyers or their sellers, and sadly enough, have no attention to detail, and they are still have them as a REO or a bank owned home. How sad is that? Unfortunately, a lot of them don't want to make a change. We do send a note out to them. Hey, we try to raise the bar, but nonetheless, they still bink, bink, fit on the wall of shame. And yes, our numbers are actually less. It's actually closer to 47. I believe there's one that is questionable. I think it is a flip uh, and it should be technically 46. So our numbers, as far as year over year, they haven't changed. They're still the same. We're still seeing pendants going up, uh, you know, even in the REO section because there's so few homes available. Now, just to be clear, and I want to be abundantly clear here, listen, a lot of people are under the misconception that bank-owned properties you can buy at this massive discount. Let me clear this up. That is not the case in our area. Why? We have very few bank-owned homes. And the ones that we do, they do paint, carpet, and vinyl, and they put it on for market value, and they sell. Why? We don't have enough homes. We don't have a big inventory of, of bank-owned homes, and we really don't have an inventory uh, that buyers are going to be able to capitalize on that would drive those prices down. Sorry. But... There are a lot of different opportunities out there. In fact, there are more fixers and off-market homes and other options that are a far better, I guess, deal, if you want to call it as such. I hate calling things deals, but a deal. Uh, you, There's a lot better opportunities out there other than bank-owned homes, which <laughs> are not a deal, okay? Just saying. All right, so if you're in this area looking at those, lose that mindset. All right. Let's uh, let's move on to our uh, to our next slide here. Here we go. Again, if you're looking for super accurate information, listen, uh, we have been spot on uh, since about 2007. Go back, take a look at our history. We're pretty proud of our history. We watch the metrics every day. 
Make sure you like and subscribe if you like really accurate information that is about our area. All right, moving on. Okay, Freddie Mac. Let's blow this bad boy up. Okay, so Freddie Mac, as you can see, this is a good constant as far as a metric that lets us know kind of how things are trading. Rates are up just a little bit than what they were last week and the week before, but they came down just a tad bit, you know, from the Thursday, which says, hey, make sure, like on the right-hand side there, make sure, I guess left-hand side for you, uh, that you're looking at the video, and the link will be down below, on five questions to ask when getting mortgage, uh, when getting quoted mortgage rates. Why? Super important. Look, I'm not a mortgage lender, but, but I, if you watch that video and you actually ask those correct questions, you'll go, wow, that is a massive disparity. And it is. Just understand they're in it for marketing. Naturally, they're going to try and bait you in with these super low rates. Like one I saw today was like 5.99%. Uh, and I thought, eh, let me check on that. All right. Loan balance, okay, so loan balance is actually pretty good, 740, uh, but there's also two points. Well, okay, well, that's 2%. And you think, well, okay, still, that, that's not too bad. All right, well, then there are other criteria, and the credit score that you had to have was pretty much off the chart. You had to have perfect credit, perfect. I think that's 880 or something to that effect. Perfect. It's like almost unachievable. But that is what they do to get you to come in, and then they start adjusting it accordingly. Watch the video. It's free. There's no cost. Watch the video. All right, moving on. When we take a look at this, uh, we've got, uh, let's blow that up for you here. All right, so we have uh, one of the examples here, 6.625, which is pretty consistent all the way around. Your 30-year conforming, 6.5. But as you can see, there's a three-quarter of a percent a discount point one point is one percent and you can see that that is three quarters of a percent still a pretty good option and then of course the uh some of the news outlets mortgage rates and purchase loan applications inch up which well that is absolutely true uh and so when you're taking a look at the different mortgage rates pay attention to the five questions all right get off my soapbox all right remember as you guys are looking at whether it's a new purchase or doing a refinance, you guys have free tools and use them, right? It's free. You got to like free stuff. I like free stuff. This is free. Advanced mortgage loan comparison. Look, you can compare four different loans at one time and they will tell you which ones are your better options. And the one below that, for those that... Uh, have a higher interest rate, should I refinance? Look, another free tool that allows you to pump in your information, put in uh, current pricing for today. That allows you the ability to decide, thumbs up, thumbs down. Hey, what way should I go? Should I refinance? Should I hold? What should I do? But remember, refinance interest rates are always higher than new money. New money is always cheapest. So don't say, oh my gosh, I saw that rate that George had on that, that uh, from that rate sheet, that was six and a half percent. Oh, that's good. Okay, that's not a refinance, that's new money. Refinances typically are about uh, a quarter to a half a percent higher. So make sure you are getting an accurate quote. And one of the questions is, what time of day is it being quoted and what are the conditions? Make sure you're aware of that. Cash out refinance, say you wanted to get some debt out, uh, and, uh, and build that into your loan, uh, those, again, it's another add-on. It's another quarter rate many times. So keep that in mind as you're looking at your options. All right. Now, the most important thing, smash that subscribe button. Let us know that you like the channel. Uh, share it with people. Share it with two people that you like and one person you don't. Let's get the algorithm out. There's no selling here. Let's get it out there for the people that could really use some solid information. In the meantime... Hope you guys have an absolutely beautiful weekend. It is very wet outside, so stay dry. And in the meantime, I will see you on the next video. Take care.